Hi folks, today we're going to review The Thing, Infection at Outpost 31. Alright, so if you haven't figured it out already, this game is based off of the 1982 movie John Carpenter's The Thing, starring Kurt Russell, and I love this movie. I absolutely do. In fact, we've got a, a painting video where I paint Kurt Russell's character, uh, McCready, so you can click on that. Uh, th the video also has a lot of trivia about the movie, so if you like movie trivia, uh, you can toss that one on to, to listen to and all that kind of stuff. All right, but let's talk about the game. I really enjoyed this game, even though it does have a couple of mechanics that I don't love. Uh, it is a lot of fun. It's survival horror with a bluff mechanic. Uh, everyone's working together, except someone who isn't. Um, and it is, and it is really cool. It's a four to eight player game mm -hmm. and you all get uh, to play different characters. You have different roles. Yeah. And at the start of the game, one player is given an imitation card. So they're not actually mm -hmm. the uh, character that they're playing. They're the imitation, the thing. Yeah, yeah. The alien has taken mm -hmm. them over. We played it with four players, and I think that it would be... I think that this is a game that is more fun the more people that you have. And the rules do change slightly depending on how many folks you've got. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like you were saying, you get to choose the different characters from the movie that you want to play. Do you want to be McCready or Childs, who was totally the thing at the end of the movie, or Nalls or Windows, a lot of these really iconic characters from the movie. And for me, that's a part of the fun. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know Tucker and I really enjoyed this game because we were playing it and we loved the movie. Um, I know you've seen it, but I don't. I don't think it's like I, one that you watch a lot. Yeah, and... I don't know the characters as well. So there were some things that I I totally got the references of, and a few things I was like, I vaguely remember this, but I still really enjoyed the game, and I think you could even enjoy it without having seen the movie. In general, you're all working together in order to try to um, escape. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you have to escape. Uh, on the helicopter, and the only way to win the game is that if the humans escape without an imitation on the helicopter. Yeah. And throughout the game, you're dealing with a bunch of problems throughout the base. Yeah, there are fires, mm -hmm. there are times where you actually have to fight mm -hmm. um, the thing. Uh, or the imitation. Well, no, you are fighting the things. Oh, okay. Uh, the the little the monsters. Right. The imi imitation. The game. The game kind of calls the imitation the player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway. Um, but those are done. You have dice rolls, mm -hmm. and then you have cards that can help modify those dice rolls or give you bonuses. And so you're all working together, but the player who's the imitation has mm -hmm. to decide. Well, do I try to sabotage this and? you know, try and play it off like, oh, I just didn't have the right card. Yeah. Or do you try and help them out so that you can get further along and, you know, hopefully get on that helicopter? Yeah, and a lot of the stuff in the game is done in secret. Like, you, you're turning in cards, and so, yeah, maybe people are asking for... Um, be like, okay, well, I need to be able to roll five more dice and you can, if you're an imitation, you can be like, oh yeah, no, I got, I got, I can help with that. And then you put something in that doesn't help at all or mm -hmm. only gives one die. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's kind of that balancing act of how do you want to do that? One of the things I don't love about the game, um, and it's not just this game, it's something that happens in a lot of these sort of bluff survival games is... At the very end of the game, the, the captain, uh, the person who's elected to be the captain, whether that's the current captain or, or it moves around, basically says, okay, prove to me that you're a human. And, mm -hmm. and you, you all sort of sit around and you talk out loud as the players, but not really in character. Like the game gives you characters, but you don't take on their personality, not really. Um, and then it's, it kind of just, be, it can become an arguing match. Well, you did this earlier and I think you were screwing us over and I always helped. But then ultimately it's just one person deciding, okay, well, I want you and you and you on my team and you can't come and play. And it, it runs into the, you can kind of play favorites. I yeah. Guess, yeah. In, in the game. But I think if you're, if you're approaching it in a like, 
hey, we're all agreeing to play this game. We're not going to take this stuff mm-hmm. personally. Yeah. Because like the when we've played it, we've played it with friends that that doesn't really happen. Yeah. Um, but I could see that easily happening. Yeah, time. if it's a games night or if you're playing it, you know, at, at, a, at a local store or brewery or something like that with people that you don't know. And the end argument happens very publicly. There's no silent vote mm-hmm. or anything like that. And there is a lot of secret stuff that happens throughout the game. So it feels a little incongruous at the very end to me. It also might have been because I was voted not to be. I wasn't allowed on the chopper. He was the imitation. I was the imitation. <laughs> So maybe I'm a little biased. Um, it's the only part of the game that I don't love. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I still enjoy the game a great deal. There's a cool mechanic that there are multiple opportunities for there to be multiple assimilations in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But the players, you don't know who's human and who's not. Yeah. Uh, even for the the players that are assimilations. Yeah, yeah. It's the it's the blood sample, right? Like so if you've seen if you've seen the movie, that's what it is. And that's mm-hmm. that those cards get handed out and dealt out. Yeah, that is a neat that is a neat thing. So you could potentially personally lose, but you're still a winner because you know the thing is all they're all connected it's one entity yeah. that's the point of the movie uh yeah that is a really that is kind of a cool thing and yeah there's blood tests throughout the game and there's a flamethrower as a part as a token that's that's in copper wire uh, all these really cool references directly to the movie which you don't have to see to enjoy the game yeah that's true uh, but it but i think it certainly helps yeah we'll say it is a longer game um mm-hmm. but it didn't ever kind of feel boring and actually in mm, fact no. it felt like really exciting and because especially the further and further along you go it gets kind of like that like tense oh my gosh like yeah what's going to happen yeah oh absolutely um, well because throughout the game like the the outpost is burning down yeah and so yeah there is that ticking clock we've got to get there we've got to so yeah i think i think our game four of us we were learning it but mm-hmm. the four of us playing took a little over an hour Mm, I think we but were it closer never, to two hours. Closer to two hours? As we were learning the game. But it never felt like it dragged. No. Yeah. No. Because I, I remember looking at the clock and realizing like, oh, we've been playing for a long time. And yeah. I didn't even realize. It's a little more complex of a game. So, you know, if you've got someone that's only ever played Monopoly, this, um, I mean, it, it'd be fun, especially if they're a fan of the film. Uh, but it's a little bit more complex, so keep that in mind if it's with a new player. I don't know if it passes the mother-in-law test. Probably not. <laughs> uh, unless your mother-in-law is, you know, a, a huge fan of John Carpenter, then maybe. Um, but it's definitely worth taking to your next uh, game night or party or something like that. The actual uh, pieces of the game, mm. I think, are pretty good quality. The minis yeah. are amazing. The minis are great. Miniatures are really cool. The layout of the interior of the box is pretty good. Things have a place. Yeah. The cards slide around Yeah, a they slide bit. around a little bit, but that's not a huge deal. As far as um, the quality of the components, you get, you're, you're, getting, you're getting pretty high quality there. So that's the thing, Infection at Outpost 31 by Project Raygun and Mondo. Have you played this game? Do you enjoy it? What do you like about it? What's your favorite um, strategy for figuring out who the assimilated person is or um, surviving if you are the thing? Uh, Let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear that. A big thanks to our patrons, especially Sean. If you want to support our channel, you can head over to our Patreon page and check out the perks of being a patron. We make videos here every Tuesday and Thursday, but go ahead and subscribe. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you hit that thumbs up and share it with uh, somebody else who is a John Carpenter fan or just board game fan. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. So until next time, I'm Ryan. I'm Dawn. And we're Roll for Initiative. Bye. Bye. Ba 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 ba